Hey all, I am Jamie Ballard. I am the owner and creator of Cupcakes and Haystacks. I started my business back in 2018 um, when I was in school for graphic design. I was looking for a way to practice um, my design skills and I stumbled upon something that I really loved. So I started with uh, principal planners. I graduated to digital planners about a year later and I still create and sell those within my own Etsy shop. Now, about a year ago, I created a uh, design course for other female entrepreneurs that wanted to learn how to start their own digital planner businesses. And in my course, the Extraordinary Digital Planner Design Course, I show you how to create um, landscape style digital planners, just like what you see right here on the screen. So you can see it has a two page layout. Now within these videos, um, I share quite a bit of information. Uh, I am a full-time RVer. I'm in my uh, little tiny house right now, so I will sometimes share information about that. Um, I talk about my course. I talk about other courses that I really love and have helped to make my own business successful. And once in a while, I share a hot design tip with you, and that's what this is going to be today. So lately, I have been using a design technique that allows me to create um, these creases here that you can see within the binding of my digital planner. Now this is just something that you can do that makes your cover look very realistic. It looks like the pages have been opened and closed quite a few times. And this same technique can also be carried over to your pages. So you can see here that within my two page layouts, I typically have a coil, but sometimes I break form and I instead want to just have a singular piece of paper with a crease down the center and it would look something like this. And so the technique that I'm going to show you today can be applied to both of these um, different things. Okay, you can uh, show, you can take what I show you um, and you can apply it to either your cover or to your two page layout. So if you wanna stick around, I'll show you exactly how I do it. All right, so here you can see that we are looking at my cover before I have added that crease for the binding. And this process is actually a lot more simple than what you might think. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start by grabbing my shape tool. And I'm going to take this square. You can see it looks a little bit funky just because I was using it to create my coils earlier. And I'm going to place it on top of this binding. I'm going to stretch it out to cover this entire leather strip that I have. And pull it down. There we go. I'm going to come over here and adjust my settings. So I want to remove my drop shadow. And then you can see here that I have it set at an advanced gradient fill. Okay, this is what we want. So chances are when you first pull up your, um, your square for your uh, shape, um, you are going to have it set to just color fill. Okay, so we'll start with that. Now I want to mention before I go too deep into this that I am using Apple Keynote. Um, I prefer Apple Keynote for creating all of my digital planners. Um, I have tried a lot of different programs. I'm very familiar with Affinity Publisher and actually I teach my course for both Apple Keynote and Affinity Publisher, but Keynote is always my preference. Um, I think it is the most easy to use and I really like the end results. So in this video, I am going to be showing you how to do this process within Apple Keynote. But if you are familiar with Affinity Publisher, you can take all of the same techniques that I show you in this video and you can apply it to your planners within Affinity Publisher as well. All right, so I have this here and I'm going to come in and I'm going to choose Advanced Gradient Fill. Now you can see that when we have this active, we've got multiple options down here, okay? Um, right now it is set to, I think this is radial, but we want it to be a linear gradient. So radial means that at the very center, it's gonna be one color, and then in a circular motion, um, you're going to have these other colors start to show up, okay? Where if we're doing the linear, it's going to be a pretty straight line. I want this gradient, however, to be at a different angle and I want it to be at 180 degrees. Oops. There we go. All right, so you can see that we have two lines here, but if we look back, or we have two colors, but if we look at here, um, you can see that we have a darker color in the center and then a lighter color on either side. That means that instead of having just these two um, colors here, the darker and the lighter, we're actually going to need to add in a third color. So I'm going to come over here to this um, 
to this bar here that has this um, the gradient colors and I'm going to click right at the center. Now you can see when I hold my mouse over it that there's a little plus sign. That means it's going to allow me to add another color swatch. So I'm going to click there. All right. And now I'm going to start with the center color first. I'm going to make this the color I want it to be. And then I am going to, um, I'm going to then work on the outside colors. I'm going to swoosh this over here just a little bit so that I can um, click on my leather band here. And all right, so I'm going to click on that middle swatch. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab my, um, my drop tool, my color dropper. And I'm going to click anywhere here with on this um, leather texture. Now, this will work no matter what kind of binding you have. It'll work with just a solid color. It'll work, um, it'll work with a pattern. So it doesn't matter if you, your binding doesn't look exactly like mine does. All right, so I've grabbed this brown color. And now what I want to do is I want to make it darker. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it here until it's darker, okay? Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to first close this out. Now I'm going to click on this um, left color swatch. I'm going to grab my dropper tool again. And I'm going to grab a color here within my binding. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over here so it's sitting right on top. And now I'm going to start to adjust um, these, um, the placement of these uh, little tabs here. So I'm going to move this over, move this over. Oops, I went to the opposite direction. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want the darker color to be not right at the center of this box, but off to the side. All right, so we're going to start with this and see how it looks. I'm going to come down here now to where you see opacity. I'm going to bring that down. over just a little bit. And that actually looks pretty good. So there we just have a basic um, crease for our binding, okay? Now, if you would like, like I have here, you can see I have this vellum with the title on top of it. What I did in order to be able to have um, the correct color of crease here, is then I went through that entire process again and I created a um, an advanced gradient box that just sits on top of this vellum okay but that is how simple it is to create that so now let's go ahead and come down here to the um, to the page crease and we'll do the same thing so you can see here that I have um, all of the dots and I'm just gonna put it right on top of those. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to grab my shape tool once again. Go. Pull this down. Now this time, I'm not going to have it cover the entire pages, oops, like I did the entire, um, the entire binding. Now the reason, maybe I should share that. All right, so the reason why um, this advanced gradient is covering the entire binding is because when I zoom in here, you can see that there is quite a bit of texture within this, um, within this binding. And since there's such a variation of color, it can make it really difficult to fade um, this advanced gradient enough so that it blends in completely um, with the binding that I have here with this leather. So instead of trying, beating my <laughs> brains out, trying to um, get it an exact match, 
um, by selecting just the right color within this texture. I just make it so that the advanced gradient covers this entire binding. However, since this page doesn't have texture in it beyond those dots, um, it's just that off-white color, um, that means that I do not have to have this advanced gradient cover the entire page. We're going to be able to um, do a really good job of blending it in. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to remove the drop shadow again. I want this so it sits right on top. Make it a little bit longer. All right, that'll do. Okay, so now once again, we're going to come over here and I'm going to um, select my linear gradient. I'm going to change this angle to 180 degrees. There we go. And now I want to add in my middle color. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can select your color when you are working with um, with these pages, with these blank pages, okay? So you could do, just like I did with the binding, grab your dropper tool, select the color of the paper, and then make it darker, okay? However, I liked mine to have more of like a slightly brown look to it. So instead, I just have chosen a dark brown color that I'm going to use. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to change up the color of the side swatches. So I'll click here. Grab my dropper tool. And for these side ones though, we do need to make sure that matches the color of the paper so that we can make it blend just right. There we go. Close this out. All right, now I'm going to start to mess with the opacity. Bring that down. And then you can just kind of move these around until you find a look that you think looks natural. There we go. See how well that blends? Probably bring down the pasty just a little bit more. There we go. And then what you can do, if you really want that edge, that crease to be defined, is that you can come on up here and grab a shape, your shape tool and select a line. And you just want it to be just a basic line no drop shadows or anything attached to it. We're going to switch that angle around. I want it to be at 90 degrees. I'm going to make it so that it sits right at the center of that crease. Extend it. And now I'm going to change the color of it. And I want that color to match the um, center of the, um, of the crease. So I'm going to come back to style. I'm going to grab my, um, my color wheel. And I'm going to select that brown color again. There we go. And now I'm going to bring down the opacity of that as well. And there we go. So you can see that the thickness of that line, it doesn't need to be very big. Um, you can make it smaller if you want to. You can make it larger. And then some people like to have um, where you can actually see like the threaded binding in it. In that case, you could switch this. So instead of just being a straight line, it's going to look more like stitching. But that is all you need to do. And then what I would recommend that you do is just select both elements of those, um, group them together, and then you can just copy and paste them to all of the pages within your digital planner. So I hope that helps. Um, have fun playing with this particular technique. And if you want to learn more about creating digital planners just like these, um, I'm going to leave a link for you in the description for the Extraordinary Digital Planner Design Course. 
All right, thanks for hanging out with me in this episode of my passive income life. If you found this video to be helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you like it. Uh, feel free to comment. I always love feedback and I'm happy to help. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.